Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to do a bit more of a laid-back video because I have just uh, pulled out this uh, cylinder I've had in my collection for quite some time now. I just haven't got around to making a video on it and um, I don't tend to pick a whole lot of stock locks unless they are um, kind of out of the ordinary and they're maybe more high security and this one certainly falls into that category. This is a Ruko cylinder by Asa Abloy and as we all know these are very very nicely made locks and tend to be uh, quite a challenge. Ruko's can be very mysterious and very fun. This particular one was um, sent to me by Monkey Lockpicks in Italy and I won this in one of his competitions. Um, and uh, this is quite a challenge. I have uh, wrestled with this for quite some time and um, I'm now kind of at the stage where I can kind of ignore the feedback that I get in here that um, is very confusing and kind of focus on what I need to do. Uh, Ruko's are kind of that type of cylinder which contain the really sharp and crisp Asa Abloy pins uh, which give a lot of extra feedback that really can be very distracting so uh, let's just have a go at picking it today and then I thought it would be quite interesting to take a look at the pins that we have inside here. Um, but yeah, just a, a relaxed uh, Friday afternoon video. So I hope you guys are all doing well and um, hope you're staying at home as much as possible. I'm certainly trying to use lock sports as an excuse uh, to spend some time by myself and uh, just get a bit of headspace to be honest. So this cylinder works really really smoothly, it is <laughs> perfectly smooth, you can't feel any catching at all. Um, it is a Scandinavian oval, I don't know if I mentioned that before, so you would normally have another half to this on the other side and the two halves would be connected by long bolts that go down the middle. Not really such a common lock here in the UK. Um, the keyway we've got here is a little bit paracentric, so I think I'm going to use this tension wrench down there. Um, um, it's quite a tall keyway, so we've got enough room to work, I think, in there. Um, this pick should work okay. And the bitting on the key isn't too bad. We've got, let's see, six pins. But that last pin there is a low cut, so it probably won't affect us too much. Alright, so let me, I've got a little um, a paper reflector thing here, just out of frame, so hopefully that will help with the lighting a little bit, um, he says as he sticks his hand in the way, so, <laughs> can't have it every way. Anyway, uh, let's just dive inside here and see what we've got. Uh, like I say, there's a lot of, these pins are very sharp, so you get a lot of crunchiness, a lot of distracting feedback, so I think that was pin four and three. A little bit of resistance on pin five, and I think that's pin five set. I'm going to try and focus on setting pin f um, pin five. Actually, uh, I'm forgetting this is a six pin lock, so I was slightly confused there. Uh, I'm going to take a deep hook now and, and reach in there. I think pin 5 is quite a short pin, so I think that's it set. Like I say, with the serration, sometimes it's hard to tell. Uh, in this lock, you don't really get any counter-rotation at all. It is literally just rock hard or there is a little bit of give in it. Um, which is why a lot of people struggle with Ruko's. Okay, there's just something catching that somewhere that I'm not feeling. I feel that the pins are quite difficult to um, center on as well, which is why I'm using this custom uh, pick that I have, which has quite a flat surface on the top of it, and it's not rounded on top, so it should be easier to find the pins. 
I know quite a few people actually like when when they make their custom picks, they like to put a little notch in the top of the um, pick just to help it center on the pin. I think that's quite a good idea. I don't know if I've ever done that before, but I might start trying that. Having said that, that, that might confuse matters a little bit regarding feedback, especially as you're inserting your pin, uh, your pick into the lock. Yeah, I don't know. There's something catching in here. Maybe I've overset something. Which is quite possible. Let me just ease off attention, see if anything drops. Oh, <laughs> we, well, we must have overset something in there. I have a feeling it was possibly uh, pin two or three, which are quite low cuts, so something must have been overset in there. Alright, so I guess let's uh, take it apart, have a look. What's inside? And, well, being SI Abloy, of course, I've gone and used um, fancy screws so we can't take it apart. But I think, I don't have a security bit set handy, but I think I've got a small enough flathead screwdriver. Give me a second and I'll go and uh, grab that. We'll give this one a go. Uh, we might as well lock it up. These are locks that you have to be careful with because there's a lot of um, sharp pins inside them that can get caught and uh, occasionally they've got some weird stuff going on inside. Little holes for pins to get caught in for example so we might be shimming this one. good for now. And I shall grab a plug follower and core holder while I'm at it. Let me grab a shim. I don't use shims a lot. Certainly not as much as I probably should. That's most of it. And that's right. We come. Um, I was slightly confused there. I was wondering where the pins had gone, but they are just hidden under the shim here. Normally, what happens when I do that is the pins will be at the bottom and they will drop out. But that all went smoothly, and possibly just as well I did um, shim that because there is a little bit of drill protection there. That hole could have caused some problems for us. Wow, we've got a lot of drill protection in this core. If we take a look up here, we've got drill protection at the front. Smaller pins down at the side. Another one on the other side. One kind of halfway down there. I'm just noticing down here, a very small detail. We have a very small uh, indent there. I'm not sure what that's about. There will be a reason behind it, but very, very nicely machined. No rough edges anywhere. And just take a look at these pins close up. Just really nicely done. And the camera really isn't doing this lock justice. And everything, including that uh, last pin, had to be set. I'm just noticing here, it's like we've got serrations in here. What have we got here? We've definitely got a lip there. It's like we have... it looks like undercut actually. But it could just be... No, I think that's some form of under, undercut which is very impressive and that would have been what was giving us all that crunchy feedback. But anyway, let's not get too distracted by that because... If I know Asa, the best is yet to come. And it looks like they've used steel pins here, so extra drill protection. Very, very nice. Let me 
just flip these around just for just because I'm a bit OCD in that sort of way. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at what's up in the top here. Already, I see some weird weirdness going on with the machining. like they've that must be drill protection yeah all right we'll take a look at that after we've taken the pins out so pin number one is a weird assa pin I think they're all going to be like that so I'm not going to bother talking about them as they come out Everything about these locks is really solid and really built to last. Okay, it's so not a single pin in there was standard. We'll just take the springs out. All right. Let's take a look at the pins that we've got here. So these are the ASA pins, typical ASA pins. We have different heights of them, so the serrations won't be uh, the same on, on each pin. Some serrations are wider than others. And if I just grab this, maybe this will help if we get some focus here. Not really. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really think this one through, did I? Yeah, unfortunately it's really hard to show you these pins because they are actually really, really uh, pr precisely made. But I think if I zoom in here you can get an idea of what we're working with. These are very, very uh, small lips on them as we can see there. And they are just like barrel pins basically. They have very very fine lips at the end here and then spooled portions in the middle which are not like spool pins, they're not that deep so they're not gonna... It's, it's just enough to get caught and that little lip is really confusing. Uh, combine that with the undercuts in the core um, that's definitely enough to keep us busy. And if you're thinking about drilling this lock, then you might want to think again because this has um, this has drill protection at the front and drill protection down each side as well. Very very impressive. I still don't see why we had that little indent in the core. I don't have an explanation of that. If you guys have any idea. Um, my only thought would be maybe this is also a core that they use in a 7 pin lock, possibly. And they just didn't drill that out. I'm not sure. Um, the only other thing I'm not sure about would be this groove down the side here. It looks like there's a place for a sidebar. So maybe this is just... Maybe they use the same uh, cylinder for lots of different locks. It's just that this was a more basic model that didn't contain those extra features. That's the only explanation I can offer for that. Anyway, um, I hope it has been um, worth your time to come and watch this video. I've certainly really enjoyed taking a look at this Ruko cylinder. It certainly didn't disappoint me. Uh, these cylinders are very fun to play with and if you can get them um, they are well worth the money. This is... Let's have a look. Yep. Um, Denmark. Uh, this is a Danish company that make these locks and it is, yeah, well, what you see in front of you kind of speaks for itself. Anyway, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. Like I say, I hope you're all well, hope you're all staying safe, and um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.